Hello there. This is again uh, your friend uh, Dean Joe Santos uh, Balagtas Biskera. Coming up to you now on the second uh, module of the uh, discussion on crimes against uh, property under criminal law. And we have a very interesting discussion here on theft. Uh, we are introducing here one of the most uh, exciting uh, topics uh, uh, under uh, crimes against property and uh, under theft, and this is qualified theft. And uh, in order not to disappoint uh, anybody who is looking into the seriousness of being sued uh, under qualified theft, where uh, the penalty would be uh, one in direct proportion to the money that was uh, the subject matter of the uh, stealing. Uh, and the second one is that uh, if the person uh, is a domestic uh, helper or somebody who has uh, extended the uh, privilege of confidence, then the penalty would be two degrees uh, higher than the or the simple theft and so that therefore the penalty goes up as the amount uh, uh, and subject matter of the uh, theft uh, increases until it reaches a certain point where you can no longer imagine how such a penalty can be imposed upon a person who just uh, uh, who touched the money and to be able to save uh, on the uh, uh, very uh, scary implication, I am introducing the discussion on indeterminate sentence. And uh, this will uh, somehow lead us to an appreciation of the mechanism on how to compute the penalties, but this time specialized in theft. And after the discussion on theft, uh, our next schedule would be to upload now the discussion on penalties that will allow us to see how uh, penalties are computed. And this session will not uh, probably be uh, a concern of those who will be taking the uh, 2023 bar examination. Usually the uh, imposition of the penalties uh, which, are, which can be very complicated in terms of categories and numbers are traditionally excluded from the bar exams. But uh, I remember uh, Justice uh, Rodolfo Palatau, a uh, retired uh, justice of the uh, Sandigan Bayan, who one time mentioned that uh, you know judges and a lot of lawyers would come to him to consult how to compute the uh, penalty that is attached to a conviction. And uh, more so, it became more complicated with the issue of the indeterminate sentence. Of course, uh, the uh, uh, crimes that uh, whose penalties are dependent upon money have been remedied by the Republic Act uh, 10951, which uh, amended uh, the uh, archaic amounts that came as early as 1933. And so it has now been updated and it is now being used by the courts. So without much ado, uh, let us now uh, start our discussion on theft, which can be very interesting. Our second module on uh, crimes against property, which covers four modules, robbery, which we already uploaded, and then theft, which is now the subject matter of our uh, uh, discussion. And then uh, Estafa, which is one of the more exciting things, you know. And uh, finally, the discussion on carnapping. Uh, sorry for that kind of uh, confusion. Uh, would also be uh, aligned. And so, uh, to start our discussion, let us click our module on TEF. And there you are. The usual uh, thing that happens in Cubao, in Quiapo, in uh, Claro M. Recto, and the most of the 
areas uh, in, uh, in in metro the, the busy uh, sections of metro manila although candidly uh, let me share with you that uh, a friend of mine who wanted to visit uh, bangkok on the last day of my dear friend uh, uh, mon aguirre and his wife uh, girly they uh, went out of their hotel uh, just to take a quick look at uh, what small things uh, they can take home as a uh, shopping and souvenir and this is where my dear friend uh, was subjected to uh, the pickpocket uh, bangkok thailand style that uh, essentially uh, exposed him to close to two million in the use of his uh, credit card uh, and so it became very uh, tough for him no? and good he told me and so here we are we will start with the Filipino version of theft uh, pagnanakaw pandurukot but before I, I start the ball rolling I, I would like uh, to uh, recall the the uh, humanitarian uh, concept that I learned in my uh, uh, study of uh, <coughs> excuse me catechism and religion at the University of Santo Tomas Education High School I remember as early as uh, first year when we were discussing uh, sins my religion teacher and I uh, uh, if I'm not mi mistaken this is uh, uh, Miss uh, Ansaldo. I was his favorite in the sense that uh, I'm the one who always uh, picks on her in the area of religion. But I remember uh, one time when she was, was talking about stealing. She said that uh, in our uh, Catholic faith, when a person is going hungry, himself and his family and he steals when he goes to the confessional the stealing arising from hunger arising from the need to feed oneself and one's family is not even considered a sin and apparently uh, the, the line of thinking is the Lord uh, will always understand that there are uh, situations where we may be exposed to the need to uh, uh, somehow uh, steal some, something in order to uh, provide for our survival. And she said, uh, if this happens, uh, then a Catholic is not expected to consider that a sin that is to be confessed in the uh, confessional and this is not the case of uh, our criminal justice system that uh, somehow if uh, somebody commits theft and the amount is even 500 pesos at the lowest a person will still be uh, liable to Philippine society and this is how our uh, political and judicial system has decided that uh, we are not uh, to forgive anybody who steals money or anything even uh, in the spirit of uh, survival however uh, we will see in a later portion that the, the amount of money stolen is 500 uh, and the uh, reason for that is precisely uh, because the person is uh, suffering from hunger or deprivation then the uh, corresponding penalty even in our revised penal code seems to recognize the need of a person to survive and uh, this is the beauty of discovering the law that uh, we see that even if uh, in our discussion of crimes against property there was a decision uh, which mentions that the classical theory is the one that is observed by our 
judicial process by our justice system where a person is assumed to know the law to know what is good and bad and is expected to do good and uh, if he commits something uh, bad then he suffers the consequences of society uh, punishing him by removing him from that society so we'll go so much on that uh, so many interesting things let's start with the first uh, module on theft which is the general principles by way of understanding what theft is all about theft is a crime committed by any person who takes personal property of another person without that person's consent and the taking is with intent to gain which is presumed but in the case of theft without any violence or intimidation against any person or with the, without the use of force upon things uh, this component belongs to robbery when there is violence and intimidation against person or there is a use of force upon things then that is the first cousin of theft uh, an elder cousin called robbery and we have already discussed that now there are uh, three additional versions of theft that does not uh, exist in robbery there is also theft when any person fails to deliver to its owner or to the local authorities a lost property he found this one uh, so many laymen probably nine out of ten uh, persons believe that uh, if there is a say who knows 500 peso bill 1000 peso bill lying on uh, the pavement then you jump uh, for joy and saying suerte and you pick up the 1000 and now you have something to bring to take your uh, quick snack and not so many uh, people appreciate that that is not suerte when you find uh, anything especially money lying on the uh, pavement on the sidewalk anywhere uh, your obligation under our criminal justice system is to look for the owner of that money and if you cannot find that the owner of money to bring it to the local authorities you can start with the barangay you can go to the uh, headquarters of the, uh, the nearest uh, police uh, outpost you can go to the uh, city government the city uh, hall and present this to whoever is authorized to uh, entertain you and turn over by declaring that you pick this up and uh, you ask for a receipt no matter how simple the receipt is written acknowledgement that you turned over who knows 100,000 pesos siguro if you turned over 1,000 pagtatawanan ka sa'yo na yan nakapulot ka ng 5,000 hingiti sila balato naman pero sa'yo na yan Pero nakapulot ka ng 100,000 pesos. Oh my golly, they will all look at you and say, are you crazy? Uh, anybody who picks it up should, should run away and keep quiet about it. But from a legal standpoint, uh, uh, finding that lost property, especially money or any valuable like a cell phone, uh, it creates an obligation for the finder to deliver that to the owner. Or to the local authorities otherwise the crime of theft is committed the second type of uh, category under this special types of theft is that there is also theft when any person shall remove or make use of the fruits or objects of the property of another after having maliciously damaged said property and uh, many of our uh, friends uh, started quoting this the third one but uh, here uh, i remember uh, the, the this this particular thing uh, very interestingly 
and this is uh, this happens when you are an operator of a of a transport uh, business so you have your driver and you entrust uh, your uh, car your jeepney your truck's tricycle to that driver in the hope that uh, he will take care of it and every now and then you notice he will report that he needs to change the tire he needs to change uh, uh, who knows the fan belt almost every day he seemed to be changing uh, a lot of things uh, unfortunately wh what you know uh, intuitively is that he must be uh, pilfering your vehicle uh, and the parts are still running and he sells it you know, in the second hand market and picks up uh, some scrap and declares that that is the uh, one that needs to be replaced so he makes money out of selling the good one and he probably will even get the kit back when he buys the replacement of the thing that uh, he uh, he reported to be uh, defective so here he is uh, essentially uh, removing the uh, object of the property your vehicle and effectively, when he removes a good tire, when he removes so once upon a time a spark plug, you know, contact point, uh, who knows, he can even go into the tire rod and all of these things. He is maliciously damaging your property by replacing it with a defective one while selling the uh, good unit. No? Mga ganyan, nangyayari yan. Now, but this is not the only uh, incident uh, there was one time, uh, I remember, uh, a senior manager was reporting to me. One of the operations managers uh, has a tendency to run to him and say, I'm shutting down my uh, front line. Uh, I have this particular uh, part that uh, broke down and I need to have this uh, refabricated, uh, you know, rewind uh, and repaired. And I need to know 10,000, 15,000, 20,000. Otherwise, we have already shut down the whole plan. And if you're the finance manager, uh, if you don't uh, show uh, some uh, money for repair of that one, effectively, he's even dumping to you the blame that the whole factory is down. Obviously, uh, this is not uh, something new. You know, some smart guys would create that story. They'll pull out uh, any part there. And, you know, they need some pocket money and declare that uh, and these people are not uh, ordinary people. They're technical people. And uh, sometimes they're even senior managers whose, uh, whose competence and integrity you would find difficult to question. Except that it happens uh, very frequently. You know, every, Parating nasisira ang isang critical part na si shutdown. He started really wondering. And one time, uh, uh, it happened to me. And I was not the number one guy. I was only the finance guy. Say, the number two guy. And so, because I we were running short of funds. And uh, I was being, in effect, made to look like uh, if I don't uh, give him the money, I am the one guilty of having shut down the factory. I talked to the managing director, a New Zealander. I have not seen him for quite a while. Uh, uh, he's Nick Howard. And I said, Nick, uh, this fellow kept telling me that broke down. Uh, what do you suggest I do? We don't have so much money. And he whispered to me, just go ahead and find some money. Give it to him. But I know his uh, foolishness. He would just have that uh, repaired and over, uh, you know, over uh, state the repair costs. As a matter of fact, he probably would have some spares uh, there, but he would not report that. He will make it appear he will have something, but I, I, I would tolerate him because he's a very important fellow in our organization. But between you and me, I already know his little naughtiness. So. I, I smile. 
and it looks like uh, that kind of uh, thing is not something uh, new even uh, lower level supervisors seem to be aware because there are people who would know how the operations run and if this uh, stupid fellow is doing it then uh, obviously some people would know about it there is also a bad rumor uh, and I, I'm sure uh, uh, this is hearsay and I would rather not uh, have you believe it but in an industry where you have the number of uh, factories there seems to be some uh, good uh, money-making deal where certain critical part parts would be pulled out of a factory and declared to be uh, already uh, needing repair. And obviously there will be an order of space to replace that. Somewhere along the line, uh, this supposed uh, defective uh, parts are passed on to the uh, second, uh, you know, to a secondary market, being sold also to other uh, factories, and declared as uh, somehow also good units because they are actually good units, so they make money on the other side, uh, and it becomes a quid pro quo. No? And you have four or five or six. Uh, uh, factories uh, where you have in effect uh, connivance uh, among all of the uh, very senior uh, maintenance guys you'll have a very lucrative uh, business of everybody trading on relatively new uh, parts uh, and nobody talks about it that has not been proven but uh, I heard about that and uh, I, I don't know whether I was uh, ready to uh, sit down and uh, take a hard look. Uh, it is very difficult to, to prove because if there is connivance and the matter is tec technical. Yeah. So it reminds us that's theft. Now, where you remove or make use of the fruits or objects of the property of your company and by by you know by, by pilfering uh, those uh, very expensive spare parts, which maliciously damage the pro the property by picking it out, you know, and selling it at the uh, block market and having it replaced, and along the way the buying and selling creates a lot of financial uh, mambo jumbo among those who are involved. Maraming kapilyuhan yan. And I'm sure those of you who are watching this will say, Dean Biskera, uh, would you be willing to for us to set up uh, our own version uh, in our comments? And uh, my comment is, uh, have fun. Feel, feel uh, at home uh, putting up your own version because I did not uh, uh, put up this uh, YouTube slide for me to open up and reveal all the things. I think I am coming up with my own uh, separate uh, YouTube channel where I, I would be talking about my 45 years experience in the corporate management world and uh, share you know, the inputs of uh, uh, what I have learned. And I'm sure many managers, especially the younger ones, may pick up, uh, you know, a piece or two and learn along the way, including the matter of corporate politics, you know. So this this uh, YouTube uh, that uh, you are all watching is in the field of law. But remember, uh, while uh, I became a lawyer uh, in 1994, so that means uh, how many years now? 2003 is 23 years. 1994 you add uh, another six or seven years you know so about close to 30 years in the field of law but i have 45 years in the field of corporate management and business and being a finance man you know a lot of things that i i can share and i will you know. but by the way i i have not met personally uh, mr roberto Ompin. Once upon a time, managing partner of uh, Cisip Gores Velayo. Again, I was not also 
I purposely did not join SGB uh, knowing that auditing may not be my uh, forte, you know, my, my cup of tea. But uh, Bobby Ongpin uh, was not a CPA. He was a uh, managed, business management graduate of the Ateneo and went to Harvard. But he joined the uh, SGB and during his uh, interview with Washington Sisi, the big uh, the guru of SGB, uh, when he was given the opportunity to ask a question, uh, he said, uh, I'm wondering, uh, Mr. Sisi, how old you are? Because I, I like to find out how much time would I have to be sitting in your chair. <laughs> Tapang, you know, and you throw it up. Uh, it's not even an auditor, you know, it's not even an accountant, a CPA. He joined the management services group. But mind you, he became managing partner of SGV. Uh, can you, you know, can you imagine a non as a accountant managing the biggest auditing firm? And while he was doing that, Ferdinand Marcos uh, called him to report to Malacanang and said, I want you to help me out. You serve your country, you become Secretary of Trade and Industry. And uh, I'd like to, uh, the reason why I mentioned Bobby Yong Pin is I saw the obituary. He passed away at the age of 86. Not bad. And with all the millions uh, that he was able to, to stock for his family. Meron nga isang, isang island doon siya namatay. So, but uh, he is one of the guys that I, 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 I something like I, I, I salute. Because it is not very easy to impress a Ferdinand Marcos. There are only very few no? uh, in the field of uh, corporate management that includes Jeronimo Velasco. In the field of uh, uh, finance and economics, of course, uh, my dear uh, idol uh, from UP, uh, Diliman uh, Cesar Virata, including uh, my former professor Manny Alba in the budget, and also uh, Jimmy, um, uh, Jimmy Laya, the three big guns of the UP College of Business Administration, where I finished my MBA and also taught for 10 years. And then Bobby Ongpin. These are... Uh, super uh, men who served Ferdinand Marcos. And so with, with this kind of uh, people whom you know are uh, competent, I am not sure about uh, that they are also made a lot of money. I do not consider them, uh, <coughs> what they call this, uh, uh, cronies. In fact, uh, I, I'm sure Bobby Ongpin must have been in the thick of developing the 11 major industrial projects, which would have given the Philippines uh, a good uh, uh, upstart on uh, industrialization. And I'm very sure uh, President Bongbong Marcos uh, has a complete uh, blueprint of all of those, and he would probably have his own uh, share of advisors and uh, workers uh, update them to bring the Philippines to industrialization. And finally, we go to the third uh, category on the, on the special types of uh, theft. Uh, theft is also committed when any person who enters an enclosed estate or a field where trespass is forbidden, or which belongs to another and without the consent of its owner, hunts or fishes upon the same, or shall gather cereals or other forest or farm products. So these are the four categories of theft. Taking of personal property with intent to gain, without violence or intimidation or force upon things, or when a person finds something which he's supposed to deliver to the owner, but he did not, you know, those who would probably remove or make use of fruits or objects of the property of another, especially pilferage, uh, damaging the property along the way, and those who enter, you know, enclosed estates, 
uh, your own territory, your own farm, you know. And people start gathering uh, or hunting inside your enclosed premises. They are all forms of theft. So now, we were supposed to have this uh, moving. <laughs> Pag ayaw gumalaw. Ayaw, gumalaw na. So we have the elements of the crime of theft. Number one is the taking of personal property. Second is the property belongs to another. The taking was without the consent of the owner. Very critical. The consent of the owner. And we will take up later on the component where the name of the owner should be identified. Next, the taking was done with intent to gain, which is presumed whenever a person takes away uh, pr the property of another without the uh, owner's consent. And in the case of theft, the taking was accomplished without violence or intimidation against the person or force upon things. Because with violence or intimidation, as I was saying, the uh, first cousin moves in, which is robbery, and not theft. And this was uh, pronounced in the case of Igdalino versus People in 2018, uh, also Cruz versus People in 2008, and Pua versus People in 1968. Starting with the concept of theft. Of theft. One, theft includes the absence of consent of the owner of the thing stolen. Basta meron kang property, personal property, kinuha sa'yo without the consent. That already is uh, a strong indication that you were subjected to Second, failing to name the owner of the thing stolen is what I was referring to a while ago. Cannot show the absence of his consent as an element of theft. This was the subject matter of a Supreme Court decision where the issue that was raised is whether or not uh, there can be conviction of a person accused of theft when the owner of the thing allegedly stolen was not identified. And the Supreme Court said that if the owner of the thing stolen is not indicated, then there will be a missing element of the crime of theft. That is, that there cannot be any manifestation that the owner did not give his consent. Because if the owner is not even identified, then there is no way by which we, uh, the, the uh, information, the criminal information, can assert that he never gave his consent to the giving away of his property. Because if he is not legally in existence in the information, then obviously there is no way by which he could have manifested the absence of his consent. And so this is now a very important component. Uh, I, I have handled a lot of uh, uh, criminal cases, but this is a very good uh, input in that when you are handling a criminal case against property, it is very important that you indicate the name of the uh, owner of the property that was subjected to theft or robbery. And then number three, theft as a criminal offense cannot prosper unless the property owner is made known yeah, to manifest the absence of his consent to the taking of his property. Yeah, that is to complement item number two. And this was enshrined in 1968 no? in the case of Pua versus People. So those are some of the fundamentals uh, in theft that would allow us now to move to the second module which talks about theft consummated versus attempted. That would lead us to discussion that you would have your attempted and consummated theft, but there is no frustrated theft. Similar to that there is attempted rape, there is consummated rape, but there is no frustrated rape. So that particular uh, structure is repeated in the case of theft in the crime against property. 
continuing with uh, the issue of theft, consummated versus attempted, here we say that there is no frustrated theft. Theft is consummated in the lawful taking of the thing stolen. And this is where we already uh, mentioned this in robbery. And it is not uh, superfluous to reiterate and emphasize this particular thing that the unlawful taking has to be present. And the indication of the unlawful taking is the possession, technically physical possession. So the unlawful taking is complete when the offender gains possession of the thing even if he has no opportunity to dispose of the thing. The moment he is already holding on and he has control of the subject matter of his uh, act of theft or in the earlier one, robbery, then there is already that possession, already consumes the unlawful taking, which effectively is the main issue on whether or not the crime of theft was committed. So we were already, uh, we took the uh, the opportunity to assert that in the case of a bank robbery, when the uh, robbers you know, uh, entered the uh, bank premises, you know, with all of their guns blazing and all of the uh, coercive uh, actions, the theft has not been consummated. No, it is still in its attempted stage until the robber, one of the robbers will say, Hoy, yung perang yan, oh, uh, sa teller. Lagay mo rito sa bag na ito. And the teller started putting the first bunch. That already consummates the, 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 the robbery or in the case of a theft. Hindi, hindi tinakot kung dinuko. And so, uh, the, the possession of the money that was dinukod already consummated the theft. Pero it doesn't necessarily mean na gusto pa niyang maraming dukutin, eh, hindi masasama yung dinukod niya. Hindi. So, even the process na meron na siya nakukuha, dumating yung pulis. So, huli kayo. Then, hindi pa ho kami nakakaalis eh. Hindi eh, wala pa ho attempted lang ito. No. The moment a uh, portion, either in whole or in part, of the entire loot, you know, is already in the possession of the uh, of the thieves, yung mga magnanakaw, meron ang kaso, consummated theft na yun. Balak mo nakawin 1 million, nakuha mo na yung 10,000 na bungkos na ganun. Consummated theft na yun. Alam mo, natuloy mo pa kinuha yung 10 million. Eh, kasama lang yun sa... Even if you have not uh, re- uh, left the, the bank and then uh, you were caught uh, right there inside the bank. But you were already holding on to it. Ngayon, sana, pumasok yung mga polis, kapapasok mo lang, tinutukan mo pa lang, wala pa na ibibigay sa'yo. Then you have attempted uh, theft. Pero the moment you are able to get hold of okay, it, a portion of the money that you wanted to take away. In the case of robbery with force, oh, you know, mapanduruko. That's the reason why uh, uh, when you're riding a jeepney, oh, nawawala na yung wallet mo. Oh, and then nakita mo hawak-hawak nung isa. Oh, din, sinunggaban mo. Oh, ikaw ay, ikaw magnanaka. Hindi ho, oh, hindi ko pa ho nakukuha yun. So, sorry sa yung wallet, pero nakuha na yung pera. So, tapos na. Oh. As a matter of fact, uh, you can even argue, no? hawak-hawak na niya yung wallet. The wallet already contains the ma- your money. So, consummated uh, theft na rin yun. Oh, oh, his lawyer can be so smart to say, hindi pa, hindi pa niya nahawakan yung pera. Hindi nga niya alam kung may pera. That's the concept. What if the person pick your uh, wallet. And fortunately for you, you did not uh, you know, you did not put any big money there. There was almost no money. You were carrying GCash and credit cards. Now the the uh, pickpocket who picked up your uh, wallet 
may he still be ex, you know exonerated on the under attempted uh, te- theft because uh, he was not able to get hold of the money your credit card is not money your gcash is not money he cannot use that to be able to put under control the money that you have deposited may nagtanong nga eh paano din kung ang nakuha rin sa wallet eh, eh check payable to cash Yan. Yan. magagaling ng mga pilosopo o mga estudyante o sabi ko, o sige, pagbigyan natin payable to cash o, but when you go to the bank, pera na ba yun? De. you cannot encash the check they will still ask you, where did you get this check lalo na anti, under the, in the existence of the anti-money laundering law naku, ang hipit o, e check ho ni ano to eh, ni Dean Biscera eh, bakit ito nasa inyo? Oh, eh, binayad niyo sa akin eh. Eh, pero wala ho pangalan niyo dito, payable to cash. Sandali ho, tatawagan namin si Dean. Ah, uh, yeah. So, hindi, ano, the, the, the person in turn, if he is uh, arrested, would only be subject to attempted uh, theft. Kasi, he was not able to encast the check. That is the position I'm taking. So, hindi mo pwedeng gaming consummated theft yun kung check lang yung kinuha. Oh, na puro attempted yun oh, credit card hindi rin pwede oh, attempted oh, but you can uh, file uh, unjust vexation binuisit kay oh, malicious mischief di ba kung bubuisit din and then the ability of the offender to freely dispose of the property stolen is not a constitutive element of theft in article 308 when the person takes possession of the thing he stole, and precisely because he cannot uh, sell it and uh, profit from it, he cannot pass it on to anybody else. That is not a requirement to conclude that he has already consummated the theft because he has already in his possession the thing that he wanted to do, or he wanted to steal. So, iba yung pinag-usapan natin yung cheque kasi yung cheque walang value. Pero kung kinuha niya sa'yo yung cellphone, ah, ibang usapan yun. No? Hindi niya pwedeng sabihin na, eh, hindi naman ako magkakapera ho kung hindi ko maibenta at yung cellphone. Eh, that is your plan out after you steal my cellphone. But that is my personal property. You already have possession and control over my property. Consummated tip na yan. Hindi porke hindi mo maibenta. Oh, eh, kaya pala hindi maibenta eh. Uh, yung, yung telepono mo eh, panahon pa nung yung Motorola old telephone na may floppy na gano'n. Sino pa ang bibili nun? But still, tep pa rin yun. Before the offender takes possession, he has not performed all the acts of theft. After his possession, he completed all the acts to constitute theft. Yan. So, possession, before, no, hindi pa na, nagawa lahat. No? Pag hindi pa niya in physical possession, hindi pa niya nagawa lahat yung act to complete the theft. So, attempted lang. Pero once he has possession, he has already performed all the acts of uh, theft and therefore, it is already consummated theft upon possession. So, walang middle ground of frustrated theft. O, kasi, ang tanong lang doon, property ko yan eh. Hawak mo na. Oh, may possession. Therefore, consummated na. No. Eh, sir, hindi yun yung cellphone nyo. Hawak nyo pa eh. Oh, eh, pero tinitingnan mo na eh. Ah, hindi. Uh, the fact that he is staring at your cellphone with the uh, obvious intent of grabbing it away from you. There is no consummated theft. Meron palang attempted. No, tinititigan ka rin. Dinikitang ka na lahat. No. Same if you have money. For as long as they have not yet taken or uh, hold of your money, it will still be attempted. Pero pag nahawa ka na, wala namang frustrated kahit na nakuha mo uli. No? Uh, that, that's one thing that we already mentioned dun sa robbery. Eh, no? Alay mo, kinuha sa yung yung pera mo. Tapos eh, no nakuha na, eh, out of 100,000, naawa naman sa'yo, isinuli 50,000. Oh, so 50,000 lang ba yung subject matter of the uh, 
of the theft or robbery. No! 100,000 kasi kompleto na kuha niya. The fact na sinuuli sa'yo did not reduce uh, the subject matter of the uh, uh, of the theft. And you will see later on when it comes to the computation of the penalty, there's a big difference between uh, him being prosecuted for 100,000 and him being prosecuted for 50,000. And he's returning to you after he has already full control of the 100,000 pesos that he stole from you would be the basis of prosecuting him and he will have a heavier penalty. Okay? So, again, theft consummated. Malinaw, possession ang, ang guideline natin dyan. So, we now, we already said no frustrated theft. We will just reiterate that and resurrect what we said uh, in robbery that the unlawful taking in theft. That the taking of items without the consent of the owner would constitute now theft. Provided the taking is complete from the moment the offender gains possession of the thing, even if he did not have the opportunity to dispose of the same. The intent to gain or animus lucrandi is an internal act that is presumed from the unlawful taking of the personal property belonging to another. So this is prima facie presumption that uh, the, the, uh, the defendant can explain that uh, wala pong unlawful taking because before I took over his cell phone, I already told him I will buy it but I will pay it this afternoon. That is why I already asked permission from him whether I can take over. Hindi po siya umimik eh. That was kinuha ko. And so therefore, my presumption is that he agreed. So there is no presumption of unlawful taking. Yun, mga ganun. It's a matter of uh, uh, coming up with your uh, defense. No? Before the offender takes possession, uulitin na naman natin, he has not performed all the acts of theft. After his possession, he completed all the acts to constitute theft. It is attempted theft before possession and consummated theft upon possession. No frustrated theft. Now, there has been a long story prior to the decision of the Valenzuela case. Ito yun, no? yung Valenzuela versus People is an end bank decision decided on June 2007. Before that, Frustrated theft was being invoked and there were decisions of the Supreme Court that supported that. And the leading uh, jurisprudence then was People versus Dino, a 1948 decision, reiterated in People versus Flores, a 1964 decision. By virtue of the Dino and the uh, Flores decision, there were instances where the Supreme Court was confronted on whether or not the theft is consummated or frustrated. And, you know, uh, this became a very interesting uh, uh, legal hypothesis until finally the Valenzuela decision came. And here, the Supreme Court took a decisive move of saying, tingnan natin ang possession. If there is possession already, then there is already a consummated theft. If there is possession, tapos nawala yung possession dahil sinuli or nahuli or hindi nakatakbo, dati-rati frustrated yun dahil hindi pa raw na-dispose yung, for example, pera, eh hindi pa niya naitakbo eh. Oh. Pero hawak-hawak na niya. Oh. The Supreme Court in the Valenzuela decision said, you have already possession eh. In fact, na hindi ka pa nakatakbo, nahuli ka, did not demote your uh, criminal penalty from consummated to frustrated. Supreme Court effectively said, by allowing the interpretation to follow the Dino and Flores uh, uh, ju uh, decision, we are opening the opportunity for, te to, for, for the crime of theft while consummated already, to be demoted, to frustrated. And though therefore, gagamitin ang palusot yan. O pag nahuli, eh hindi na mo consummated, frustrated or attempted. 
Supreme Court said, let us not make trouble anymore. Ang critical point yun, dinefine na. Possession becomes the critical. Mahirap mong kontestahin. Oh, hawak mo na eh. Oh, possession. Oh. Hawak mo na, hindi pa ho. <laughs> Ganyan. Oh. Kasi ho eh, ako, ako ho naman ho eh, empleyado nung ano eh. Oh, inauthorize ho ako no, nung, nung, nung may-ari oh, na hawakan ko ito. So, at wala akong balak na nakawin ito. Eh, I am holding this interest. Yun, lose ko. Oh. Pero pag tinasukan mo ng frustrated, hindi ko pa ho natatakbo yung pera eh. eh di, hindi pa ho ano. Yun, yun ang theory under the Dino and Flores uh, jurisprudence before. Obsolete ano, jurisprudence. Na kung hindi pa naitakbo yung pera, eh wala pang consummation. Nung pinasok na yung Valenzuela decision, eh kasi meron din mga other decisions. Ang dami oh, ito. Na hindi naman... Uh, agreed doon sa Dino and Flores decision. So, bakbakan yung Supreme Court, pabalik-balik kung, kung sino yung mga kurso na dahan na itong sundin. So, finally, yung Valenzuela decision, which is an end bank decision of 2007, sabi ng Supreme Court, tayo nga eh magkasundu-sundu na kasi naglalaban-laban yung mga decision natin. O, eto, pag-usapan na natin. O, and bank decision. Ano bang gusto natin talagang principle? Yun, nag-evolve. Possession consummates the act of uh, death. Okay. So, ganda, no? Napakaganda. And this is a fundamental thing that uh, if you have not uh, studied this aspect, you will be equally confused. Ako mismo, eh, whenever I, I hear about bank robbery, Eh, dati rati, eh, before I went into all of this uh, review of all of this criminal law aspects, eh, saan nga ba talaga may robbery? Oo. Katulad nung isang storya sa YouTube na yung isang gwardiya, eh, nagsuspect siya sa yung limang pulis, eh, mga hold up pala. Lumaban siya. Oo. At nakipagbutukan na patay yata yung mga pulis, eh. Pero essentially, anong kasalanan ng mga polis? Wala. At attempted. No? At mahit kung magaling ang abogado, eh, sasabihin ni, eh, hindi ko kami nang hold up. Hindi ko yung mga pinata na polis. Hindi ko. Nagpunta ko sila kasi merong call that there is, uh, ano, that there are uh, uh, bands uh, that are attempting to rob. Mm-hmm. Delikado ngayon. Kapag magaling yung uh, in private prosecuting attorney against the security guard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, that is uh, no frustrated uh, theft. Uh, and so, we are ready now to go to the next topic. Ayaw pumunta ro sa ayun, yun. Nakapunta na. Our next topic in our uh, table of, round table of contents is qualified theft. Ito, very, very critical. And it will be interesting, unang-una, eh, doble raw yung penalty. Dalawang talon ang penalty. And the penalty is dependent upon the amount that was the subject matter of the stealing. So, mauwi na sa discussion ng penalties. Panuri natin. Very, very interesting. To me, this is where I spent uh, some interesting moments in the probably two or three days kung binubuting thing and develop uh, the, uh, the slides lalo na sa penalty na napakaganda. Let's take a look. So, qualified theft is still theft whose penalty is higher by two degrees than that prescribed under Article 309 when committed. Yan. Sino ang pwedeng maakusahan ng qualified theft? Number one, domestic servant. Nakatira sa'yo, pinagkakatiwalaan mo, uh, nagluluto ng pagkain mo, pati yung pera mo, nakikita ko sa nilalagay. The domestic servant knows where your jewelry are stored and probably would even have access to some of your uh, safety. Then, in addition to domestic servant, any person who has been given, you know, uh, trust and confidence and abuse, grave abuse of confidence. 
dito pumapalo ngayon yung mga drivers, you know, uh, mga helpers, assistants, cashiers, yeah, collectors, because they are able to handle money where only material possession, hindi substantive possession, material possession, because when they collect the money, when they handle the money, that is not their money, it is the money of their superior, the money of their company. And when they uh, take away that money, then there is grave abuse of confidence. Pinagkatiwalaan sila eh. Na yun, hawakan lang in the name of the company, so probably for deposit or turnover. There is also qualified theft if the property stolen is motor vehicle. Take note, ha, pwedeng makahabla rito. And at the same time, merong simultaneous case of carnapping. Well, na we will we will uh, define obviously uh, when we discuss carnapping. Ano ba yung mga sa mga uh, vehicles that would be if taken would be a violation of the law on carnapping. Eh, bago ko hindi mayon. Naguguluhan din ako. Alam ko pag kotse carnapping. Eh, paano kung tricycle? Ano, tricycle napping. <laughs> Dito medyo malinaw na. Motor vehicle. And then we go to uh, car napping. Naka-enumerate doon. Kung ano yung mga hindi. Kahit na kunin, no, maaaring it is theft or robbery. Pero hindi car napping. No? Yung isa, yung sabi, road, road roller. No? Advance natin ng konti. Eh, yung road loader, tutuwa ako eh. Kasi one time, eh, there was this little, uh, you know, malitan ng biruan. Sige nga, magaling ka sa English. Ano sa English ang pison? <laughs> pison. <laughs> Oo, oh, yun, ang pison, road roller. No? <laughs> Gumugulong eh, road roller. Oh, pison yun. Ano? Yung, pag yun ang nilakaw, hindi karnapin yun. Uh, one of the others excluded. So, siguro yung mga bulldozer na ginagamit sa construction. But that can be the subject matter of robbery or theft. Pero it does not fall within carnapping, as we will learn later. Pero pasok dito, kung may motor, ano, eh, yung, yung sasakyan, it will still be theft. No? Qualified theft. Yeah, qualified theft. Dahil mail matter. Uh, Dati-rati, very sacred ang mail. Eh ngayon, with the advent of uh, technology, medyo nabawasan ng konti yung importance ng mail market. It's still listed. It's qualified te pag pinakialaman yung, yung mail. Large kettle. And then, coconuts taken from the premises of a plantation. Fish taken from a fish pond or fishery. Inaalagaan yun eh. O para maging commercial, commercially viable business, tapos na nakawin. Yun, qualified tip. No? Hindi lang simple tip. And profit taken on the occasion of fire, earthquake, typhoon, volcanic eruption, or any other calamity, vehicular accident, or civil disturbance. Tinan nyo ha, vehicular accident. So pag may na na aksidente, nagkabanggaan ako, eh, dinampot yung cellphone, dinampot yung bag, dinampot kung whatever doon sa kotse, that is qualified theft, hindi ordinary theft yun. Kasi, na disgrasya na nga, sasamantalahin. So, these are all acts uh, that will uh, elevate the kind of theft from simple theft to qualified theft. Eh, so what? Amo, binanggit na na merong double yung penalty. So, let's take a look at that as our final recording point. We immediately go to the issue of ano ba ang parusa if it is a simple theft na nagnakaw. The uh, penalty for simple theft or theft for that matter and also robbery would be a function of uh, the value of the stolen property. Ito, maraming mga jurisprudence dito. Very interesting. And so let's take, take a look at the stabilization, the maximum and the minimum value and the corresponding penalties in years. No? How many uh, years maximum, how many years minimum, 
And what is the name of the penalty in its maximum and minimum categorization? Dito, I'd like to re refocus that whenever we talk about uh, criminal offenses involving uh, imprisonment, ang hirap-hirap intindihin nung ano, kahit na kukunti lang siya. Ano? Um, for example, uh, simulan natin doon sa baba. O, arresto minor, arresto mayor, ang pagkatapos, eh, eh, ano pa ba? Prisyon na uh, correctional, prisyon mayor, then reclusion temporal, reclusion perpetua. O, eh, pagka yun na nakikita mo sa mga desisyon, medyo kahit abogado ka, naguguluhan ka. Ano ba ibig sabihin nun by way of imprisonment? That is why to me, other than death or reclusion perpetua, which is 30 years, I would rather refer to the discussion of cases in terms of the number of years imprisonment. And then, tsaka na lang natin lagyan ng pangalan yung penalty. It would be, this I think is a, is a more important component even for our own uh, fellow Filipinos. No? Ilang taon mabibilang ko yan. Eh, sabi mo, reclusion temporal. Kung ikaw mismo abogado ka, nakalimutan mo kung yung range ng reclusion temporal. No? Okay, so let's take a look. We will start with simple tip from the most, uh, from the highest values. No? So, if the property stolen is uh, in the range of a minimum of 1.2 million to 2.2 million, the maximum imprisonment no, corresponding to the 2.2 million is 10 years. So, di ba mas madaling intindihan? No? Pag nagnakaw ka, 2.2 million, 10 taon ang mabibilang ka. Rather than, ah, magkakaroon ka ng penalty na prisyon mayor in the medium. Parang hindi, hindi malinaw. Pero pag sinabi mo, ikaw, ha, nagnakaw ka, no, kung mag-iingat ka, sampung taon ang tinitingnan mo. No. Pero kung hindi naman 2.2 million, 1.2 million, walong taon pa rin, o dalawang taon na ang diferensya doon sa from 1.2 million to 2.2 million. Hindi ba mas madaling intindihin ito na ito pinag-uusapan? Kung may kliyente ka, kahit na ikaw, layman, Mas naiintindihan mo ito, ano, kung magnana ako ng 2.2 million, 10 taon. Kung medyo nabawasan ng konti, 1.2 million, 8 years, di ba? O, tsaka mo na lang sabihin, ay, yung 10 years yun, eh, yun, eh. prisyon mayor yun, medium. O yung 8 prisyon mayor, minimum. Di ba? Pero malinaw sa'yo. Pero ito, inuna mo. Wala, malabo, gray area. And so, to me, I would encourage the discussion on criminal law no, on crimes where there is emphasis now on the exact years na pinag-uusapan rather than yung categorization ng penalty. But let us move a little farther kasi barya lang yung 2.2 million sa panahon ito eh. What if what was stolen is greater than 2.2 million? Ang usapan, when it is, a, it is a crime of simple theft, the highest penalty for simple theft will not exceed 20 years. Pag nagnakaw ka, 20 years lang. Pero isusuling mo pa rin yung ninakaw mo. Plus pagsisilbo mo, 20 years. What does it mean? For example, if a person uh, stole money for 2.2 million, 10 years yun, paano inaabot ng 20 years? Ang mangyayari for every 1 million on top of the 2.2 million, so another 1 million, 3.2, yung additional 1 million will be equivalent to additional 1 year. Yan. So, from, from 2.2 million, dinagdagan ng 1 million, 3.2, magiging 10, million, 10 years plus 1 year, 11 years. No? Pag nadagdagan na naman ng isa, another 1 year na naman. No? Pero, hindi dapat lumampas, kahit na ang dami-dami ng ninakaw, hindi pwedeng lumampas ng 20 years. Okay. And so, you're now saying na ito, oh, prison mayor in the medium term, uh, as maximum and prison mayor in the minimum term. Pero dito, pag sinagad mo yan, baka may makita ka na sitwasyon na reclusion perpetua na. Oh, dahil maabot na ng 20 years, eh, di ba? Eh, 30 years naman ang reclusion. Na, pero maximum lang yung 20. Pag na, so, ang, ang reason dito, pag nakaw ka na ng magnakaw, kaya ngayon, inimbento no, yung, yung mga 
offenses na ang lalaki ng mga ninanakaw, di ba? Oh, precisely creating a different set of heavy penalties, no? di ba? Kaya alam na natin yun. Uh, <coughs> meron tayong mga criminal offenses ngayon na pag napakalaki yung ninakaw, ano ba yung mga krimen na ganun, no? meron tayong ganun. Kaya, right now, it escapes me. I was not, I, I, I was, I did not include it in this discussion. No? Pero meron yun, lalo na involving uh, graft and corruption. Malalaki. Okay. Ngayon, dahil nakita na natin kung anong penalty kapag ka ang laki nung nilakaw, no? 2.2 million so on. Simula naman natin sa baba at papanik tayo, tingnan natin kung paano aabot doon. At the lowest level of our criminal justice system on TEP is 500 pesos. 500 pesos. And here, if the 500 pesos was stolen and the offender no, acted because of hunger, poverty, or difficulty of earning a livelihood for his family or himself, i-combine mo dalawang yan, no, ang magiging parusa lang 10 days. Sir, masyado na ako nagugutom, mga matay na ako, nahihilo na ako. Kaya po ginuha ko yung 500 pesos mo. Ganun ba? E 500 lang. O yan o, dalawang libo na, sa'yo na yan. O. Sir, hindi nyo ko yabla. Hindi. Kalimutan mo yan. Donasyon ko sa'yo yan. Malay mo, baka bumaligtad ang panahon. Ikaw naman ang umaman, ako naman ang mga kailangan. Hindi. Siguro ibabalik mo din yung 2,000 humanitarian meron yung lowest level no pero kung magmamatigas yung ninakawan 500 pesos kahit na dahil nagugutom no eh pwedeng ang penalty eh 5000 pesos maximum penalty pero pag pagnanako ka ng 500 pagbabayaran ka ng 5000 pesos no or 10 days no yun ang minimum and maximum And so you have what is called sa 10 days, you have your arresto mayor in the minimum. Ayan, arresto mayor minimum. Eh, mas madaling intindihin, pag nakaw ka ng 500, kahit na nagmakaawa ka, nagugutom ka, kukulong ka rin pa ng 10 days. Rather than, o oh, pag nagnakaw ng 500, oy, arresto mayor yan in the minimum. Walang meaning. Oh, para sa ating mga kapabawayan, lalo na yung mga nanunood dito, Huwag niyo na masyadong pansinin ito kung gusto niyo lang maging sikat. Okay, mag-aresto mayor kayo minimum. Pero mas madali sa atin, tayo mga, mas uh, sabihin natin, mas mauutak, mas practical. Nako ka ng 500, sampung araw ka sa kulungan. Very easy. Either for a lawyer or for somebody who wants to find out attorney, ano mangyayari sa akin, nahuli akong 500. So, pero, Nagnako ka ng 500, hindi ro sa boss mo, ha? hindi sa kumpanya mo, kasi simple tip lang, pero pag qualified tip yan, eh, mamaya natin pag-usapan, medyo heavy yan. No? Oh, so, magnako ka na lang doon sa hindi mo, hindi ka pinaga, yung, yung tindera for example, dukutan mo na lang. Oh, pag nahuli ka noon, 10 days lang, pero wag mong dudukutan yung amo mo. Private driver ka, yun, mga driver, marami yan. Hmm. May iiwan mo yung wallet mo, may iiwan mo yung kung ano-anong envelope dyan. Ako, dumudukot yun. So, kala hindi mo binibilang. Ako, eh, kung ikaw eh, sana'y kumita ng malaki, mas, mas makuwenta ka. Diba? Okay. Continuing now. What if the next level of uh, money was stolen? So, in the range of minimum of 500 to 5,000, The penalty, 6 months. Dito, 10 days eh. Ito, pag umabot ng 5,000, 6 months ka makukulong. Hmm. Kaya dito, pag nilagyan mo ng pangalan, eh sa 6 months na yan, aresto mayor in its maximum. Pagka 10 days, aresto mayor in its minimum. O pang, panggulat lang ito. Pero sabi mo, oy, pag 500, 10 days ka. Pagka 5,000, o 6 months ka na. Marami-rami ng 10 days yun, di ba, no? O, sa 6 months times uh, 30 days, 180 days, no? 18 na uh, 10 days yun. Okay. And then, 
Paano kung mas malaki pa yung natikada? No? From 5,000 to 20,000. No? 20, And so in this particular case, ang mangyayari, yung 20,000 mo ay equivalent na sa 2 years imprisonment. No? Nagsisimula sa 4 months. No? Ito may konting discrepancy. Ito dito, nagnakaw ka ng 5,000, kukulong ka ng 6 months. Dito, pag malaki yung kalaki ng konti yung ninakaw mo, nasa range ng 5,000, E eh, four months lang yung minimum. Dito flat six months. So, that is a, a denoble check natin. Mukhang tama ito. But there is a little anomaly here. So again, yung two years mong yun, yun ang presyon correctional na minimum. Two years. Or yung four months na yun, yun yung aresto mayor na medium. Yun, yung nasa gitna ng dalawang yun. O so, na ten days, tsaka six months. Yung four months. Medium ito. Ito maximum. And then, uh, if the amount of money stolen was even bigger, from 20,000 to 600,000, the penalty in years is 4 years. Or if it is at the lower of 20,000, it is 2 years. So, prision correctional in the medium or prison correctional in the minimum. Ayan. And then finally, bago sumamparun sa awo, 1.2 million, Kung naninakaw between 600,000 to 1.2 million, 6 years maximum, 4 years minimum. O prison correctional in the maximum, 6 years, or prison correctional in the medium, 4 years. Yeah. So again, when you focus on the number of years, most laymen would probably appreciate that and understand. 